talked about several different simple gas laws that are just looking at the relationship between two of the properties of gases. And we can actually take those and combine them into a single gas law, which is called the ideal gas law. I'm not going to go over exactly how that works because most students are not that interested. So we can put those together. We come up with PV equals NRT, which is the ideal gas law. And R is called the ideal gas constant, and it's basically just a proportionality constant. So um, the number associated with R will depend on the units, but we're going to be using units of liters, atmospheres, moles, and Kelvin. And so the value of R will be 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole <coughs> Kelvin. <coughs> yes? Um, you should try to remember that. Um, I think I give it on the, <coughs> on the exam information sheet. I think I do. Um, so all of these different gas laws are related to each other. And the one thing I want to show you is how you can take um, the ideal gas law and very quickly derive any of the other gas laws. And it's, it's not anything fancy or hard. So the way we're going to start here is we're just going to take PV equals NRT and we're going to divide by PV equals NRT. And I'm going to give the top subscripts of 1 and I'm going to give the bottom subscripts of 2. I didn't put a subscript on R because it doesn't change, but if you did put subscripts on it, it wouldn't matter. So ideal gas law divided by the ideal gas law. And then we're going to cancel out anything that doesn't change. So the ideal gas constant doesn't change, so I'm going to get rid of that. Now let's say we have an Avogadro's law problem. In Avogadro's law problems, um, the pressure and the temperature don't change. So we may not know what they are, but they don't change. So if the pressure is not changing, that means that pressure one is equal to pressure two, right? And so it doesn't matter if we don't know what they are, they cancel out. So pressure one and pressure two are equal because we're working at constant pressure, so those cancel out. The other one that's constant in this kind of a problem is the temperature. And so temperature one will be equal to temperature two. And so there I have an equation I can use to solve an Avogadro's law problem. Now that does not look exactly like what we said was Avogadro's law. I keep trying to write with the eraser and it never works. This is how we presented Avogadro's law. Um, this is just a rearrangement of that equation. So I'm going to give you a heads up on the worksheet. There are, there's at least one problem, there might be two actually, where you're not going to be able to find the equation that you need in this chapter. But you can do this. One ideal gas law divided by the other Keep everything that's changing, all the stuff they gave you, anything that's staying the same, cross them out, and there you've got your equation. Okay? So let's do an ideal gas problem. An 8.50 liter tire contains 0.552 moles of gas at a temperature of 305 Kelvin. What is the pressure in atmosphere MPSI of the gas in the tire? So again, reading the problem, and let's highlight the numbers and then see what the question is. We want the pressure in atmosphere and PSI. Now, this problem doesn't say anything about stuff changing. The 
the problems we did in the last lecture was the volumes changing or the heat's changing, the temperature's changing. So nothing's changing here, right? So we've got liters and moles and Kelvin, and some of these the problem identifies, and some of them it doesn't. Like here it says temperature of 305 Kelvin. But we should know that Kelvin is a unit of temperature. So even if it doesn't tell us this is the temperature, we can figure that out. Here, an 8.50 liter tire, 8.5 liters is at P, V, N, or T. It's V, the volume, right? Because liter is a unit of volume. So we've got 8.50 liters. So that's the volume. And we've got 0 0.552 moles. And what letter? N. And then we've got 305 Kelvin. And so that's going to be the temperature. So ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. We're trying to find the pressure. That's that guy right there. Um, so we've got the volume, we've got N, we've got T. The other thing we need is R. R will not be given in a problem. You either memorize it or you can go look it up. 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Units are important. I've said that before, they're still important. The units here tell us what units we have to use for everything else. Yeah? <clears throat> R is always this when we use these units. Yeah. Can you give us R? So, um, R is always the same, and so homework, worksheets, anything like that, you just look it up. Like I said, I think I gave it to you on the useful information sheet for the exam. We can go there and look later. Yeah. So now I've got, I've got everything except P. So I need to rearrange this equation to get um, P by itself over there, right? So P is equal to NRT divided by the volume. And, uh, yeah, question? Yeah, I was kind of confused. Um, so you said R is the personality function. Mm -hmm. So um, on the other ones, um, if you wrote, rewrote them in terms of this, what, you could, instead of K, you just write, you could write R? Like, like the simple gas laws? Um, no. Okay. No, you couldn't. It only works for the ideal gas laws? It, it only looks, it only works when you factor all of them in. Yeah, otherwise um, the proportionality constant would be different depending <coughs> on what constant variable you were, how can you have a constant variable, right? But you know what so I mean? Constant you're using, right? Yeah, so you know, if you've got, if you're looking at pressure and volume, yeah. the proportionality constant is gonna depend on how many moles and what temperature right. you're at. Yeah, so yeah, this constant will so it's only, only constant. It's only constant for the ideal gas law. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So we're going to plug everything in here. 0 0.552 moles. And then there's N, not NR. Oh, sheesh. A206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And then we want the temperature. 305 Kelvin. And then we divide this whole mess by the volume, 8.50 liters. And then we should always check the units. So the liters are canceling, the moles are canceling, the Kelvins are canceling. That is good news.
So the unit that's left is atmospheres. The book is kind of sloppy about the unit conversion between um, Celsius and Kelvin. Um, so I've decided to just go with it. So if they give you a temperature to the nearest degree, like 305, or they say 25 degrees Celsius, you can go ahead and just use 273. But if they give you some decimal places, then let's use the 273.15. But I'm not going to try to trick you with that. I will try to trick you with giving you Celsius and knowing that you need to do it in Kelvin. Um, and like one where the temperature is changing and we're using a simple gas law and I'll give you the temperature in Celsius and ask you to give me the temperature in Celsius at the end. And so you have to convert to Kelvin and then you have to convert back and a lot of people will just skip the whole Kelvin thing. And I know that and I'm, I'm warning you, right? So then it's not really a trick, is it? I will do that to you. Kelvin, Kelvin, Kelvin for gases. It has to be Kelvins. Okay. Any other questions about this? Here's another one. What volume does 0.556 moles of gas occupy at a pressure of 715 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of 58 degrees Celsius? So that first one was, um, they were kind of polite and they gave us all the correct units, and this time they're being a little more realistic. So there we've got moles of gas, and we have a pressure, not in atmospheres, and a temperature that's not in Kelvins. Those are, that's what we're given, and I'm asked to find the volume. <clears throat> so we're going to take these numbers, and we're going to write them down. 0.556 moles, and so we've got our Ideal gas law, right? PV equals NRT. So moles of gas is what letter? N. N for number of moles. Um, and then we have 715 millimeters of mercury. Well, we should recognize that's a pressure unit, but they also tell us that's the pressure. And they say temperature of 58 degrees Celsius. Uh, this time we're trying to find the volume. Um, we're also going to need R. 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So these are the units I have to use for my other quantities. So amount of gas in moles, that one's fine. But can I use millimeters of mercury? No, I can't. In the simple gas laws where we're, the pressure's changing, you can use any pressure unit because the units are going to cancel out. They're not going to cancel out in the ideal gas law. We have to use atmospheres. So I need to convert this. <coughs> Two atmospheres. So I'm going to divide by millimeters of mercury so those cancel out. And this is one you should know just to save yourself a lot of time. One atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. So this will be 0.9407. And then the temperature in Celsius. So here, this is to the nearest one degree, and so it's okay to just do 273. If you choose to use the 273.15, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's better, actually. Okay, so now I've got my units all, all right. Moles, atmospheres, Kelvin, um, and then my volume will end up in liters. So I need to rearrange my equation up here. I'm going to divide by P this time. 
see you in the hallway, really. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> Needs to un enunciate better. I can't can't quite understand what he's singing about. Okay, so V equals N R T over P. We should always show some work for a problem like this. Now, do you have to do all of this every time? No, no, you don't. But down here, what I'm writing right now, this is kind of the bare minimum. Write the rearranged equation and then write it with all the, the numbers plugged in. So 0.556 moles and my ideal gas constant. temperature divided by the pressure. And I'm checking my units, moles and moles, liters. Nope, not liters. Those don't cancel out. And kelvins. Sixteen point zero five two liters, and so that would round to sixteen point one liters with three significant figures. Any questions? Yeah. The volume when in the calculation will always be in liters. Yeah. Well, so if they give you volume in milliliters, you just need to convert to liters. And like here, if they ask for the volume in milliliters, well, the ideal gas law gives us the volume in liters, then we convert to milliliters so if needed. It's kind of like opposite to molarity Well, molarity is moles per liter per liter. Yeah. We often measure volumes in milliliters because it's a more convenient size for what we're doing in the lab. But the liter is the base unit of volume, and so that's why all of these things tend to have <coughs> liters instead of milliliters in them. And, you know, if you're doing homework some random place and you can't remember what R is, and you try to look it up online, so that R is a constant, but the number 0 0.08206 is with these specific units. There are other values of it. There's 8.314 uh, joules per mole Kelvin. And you can find it, it with lots of other types of units. So just be careful of that. I think it's always best to look in your course materials to find things that you need first because you go out in the big World Wide Web, right, and there's all kinds of stuff out there. And it may not be the easiest form to you to use for your, your work and where we've tried to give you the, just what you need in the course materials. So there's one more here. Determine the pressure in millimeters of mercury of a 0.133 gram sample of helium gas in a 648 milliliter container at 32 degrees Celsius. Um, so we have a mass, we have a volume and a temperature, and we want the pressure in millimeters of mercury. 
again, there's, there's nothing changing, right? And so that's what clues us in, you know, you know aside from the title up there, ideal gas law, um, that we're gonna use the ideal gas law for this problem. So I'm gonna take these numbers and I'm gonna write them down. 0.133 grams, uh, grams of helium. And we've got 648 milliliters and I've got 32 degrees Celsius. So then we want to identify these. Well, the bottom one is a temperature and the middle one is volume, right? Because milliliters is a volume unit. And the grams, can we use grams in the ideal gas law? No, no we can't. We need moles. So this is going to become the amount of gas in moles. We're just going to have to convert it. Can we convert grams to moles? Mm -hmm. Sure we can. We'll just use the molar mass. So we need to know what it is. It's helium. And so we look it up on the table, and it's 4.003 moles is one gram. I'm sorry, grams is one mole. Point, point one three three. Divided by 4.003. So this is 0 0.033225 moles. Can we use milliliters? No. No, we need to convert this to liters. So kind of the shortcut way is to say, well, I'm just going to write it 648, and milli stands for times 10 to the minus 3 liters. And then here, to convert my temperature, I have to add 273, 05, 11. And then the other missing piece is R. So the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. And we're solving for pressure, so I'm going to divide by volume. If you need help rearranging equations, please come and talk to me. Um, a lot of people struggle with that, but I can help you best with that in small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. So I've got my moles. And I've got my R. temperature, and I'm going to divide by my volume, 648 times 10 to the minus 3 liters. Liters are canceling, moles are canceling, kelvins are canceling. So I'm getting 1.2833 atmospheres. The question wants that in millimeters of mercury. So I'll take my answer in atmospheres and convert to millimeters of mercury. So 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere. And 
facility brought it. Um, this is the conversion between millimeters of mercury and atmospheres. So we, there's a table given in the slides and in the textbook. Um, I would encourage you to memorize this one though, because it gets used so often. And that comes from, you know, when we talked about the barometer and the height of a column of mercury, an atmosphere at sea level, the air pressure will support a column of mercury that's 760 millimeters tall. Any other questions? Hmm. It's off by one, isn't it? But it's in the uncertain digits, so I'm not going to stress about it. <laughs> 